My name is Robert Peters. I'm a part of group four, and I'm going to be talking about chapter 13, section two, uh, which is specifically talking about the chair of the Board of Governors. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about what the chair of the Board of Governors exactly is. The chair of the Board of Governors is one of 12 voting members of the Federal Open Market Committee. These members have no legal authority over any of the Federal Open Market Committee, but you may ask yourself, if it has no authority, if the chair has no authority over any of the committee, what power does the chair exactly have? Uh, the chair does run the show in terms of what is acting as the chair, the spokesperson that represents the Fed, and handles negotiations between Congress and the President of the United States. Uh, the chair also sets the agenda for the board and the Federal Open Market Committee meetings, talking about what's going on, monetary, fiscal policy, uh, although the chair has no legal authority in the years past, the member who holds the chair has strong attitudes and has respect that goes a long way with it. Um, many of the members of the uh, Open Market Committee have tremendous respect for this member uh, who holds the chair and um, all the duties that go along with it. Um, additional powers of the chair, uh, they also oversee and supervise the board's economists and advisors and because of the decisions made by the board, uh, this results in the chair having some control over monetary policy. Now we're gonna discuss inside the Fed, the styles of each of the chairs. Uh, each federal chair has his or her own personality that affects how decisions are made within the Fed. Um, I go on to talk about a, an example, talking about Chairman uh, Greenspan, who uh, heavily relied on statistics and numbers and uh, didn't always go with the norm of what trends were uh, suggested, whereas uh, Chairman uh, Bernanke and Chairman or Chairwoman Yellman, uh, they often sought the suggestions of the board and what they had to say about current trends uh, with monetary policy before implementing or suggesting what they thought should go into place. On the style of each boardman or boardwoman, heavily influenced how decisions are made. Um, like in the example above, um, if you rely on numbers or trends, that will tell you uh, more commonly than not how a policy. Uh, the style of each boardman or woman uh, heavily influence how decisions are made. Like in the example above, whether you rely heavily on numbers or trends in the years past can affect the economy and whether or not a policy needs to be put into play or not. Um, also changing with the time is the way meetings are held and conducted. In years past, under Greenspan, uh, he took over the conversation, uh, not really allowing for many board members to um, put in their suggestions before he decided on what monetary policy should be put into play. Uh, but with Yellen and Bernanke, uh, they wanted board members' uh, opinions and they wanted it to be more of a discussion before uh, suggesting monetary policy and what should be put into the economy today. Uh, the Federal Open Market Committee meetings. Uh, there are some slight changes from Greenspan to Bernanke and Yellen, uh, where the way that each board member participated, like I said before in Greenspan's time, before hearing uh, from each of the Federal Open Market Committee members, he would discuss new monetary policy and have the following members agree or disagree pretty simple as that. It was either yes or no, and he moved on with the conversation. But with Bernanke and Yellen, they would like to hear from each member summarizing what they've heard, and then that's when they would outline the new policy and what should be implemented into the new uh, economy. So everyone kind of collaborated together. Uh, all those slight and subtle differences, these changes really just changed the entire way the meetings were held and um, the insight that was given by each board member. Lastly, I have some questions for the class that uh, I'd like to have you reflect on. Number one, it's uh, how much power does the chair have over board members? Uh, I know I made this pretty clear in the first couple slides, but this is more of an open-ended question where just based off your own insight, what do you think uh, from the slides You've learned about what the chair has to say and what the authority is. Second question, what influence does the chair have on electing other board members? This isn't as open-ended, 
Um, this is pretty pretty strict to it. Uh, just have you reflect on that. And the last question, does the chair have any influence on monetary policy? That's a great question, and uh, I just really want you to reflect on these three. Thank you.